Hey guys, it's Janet Borsky. Today I'm going to do part two of how I self-published my poetry book, Bones. I based some of these questions on the comments that I'd received in part one of this video. If you haven't already watched that, I'll link it down below. Here we go. I think the main thing is to look at the themes of the book itself. So knowing that this book for me is about vulnerability, there's a lot of emotion in it, I wanted the cover to reflect that. I wanted the viewer to see this book and kind of get a sense of what the book is about. I selected the subject to be unclothed um, as a sign to show vulnerability. The other aspect that I think is quite eye-grabbing about this particular cover is the simplicity. It's not too busy, there's a lot of free space, and there's a lot of contrast. So there's the black, the grey, the white popping out in front of that. Um, so really your focus goes on the blurb, the image, the title, the name, the image. Okay, before we go on to the next question, I did want to talk about formatting because I didn't actually know this until my graphic designer advised me. She said that when I provide the photo to her, she doesn't want it in a JPEG format. And the reason for that is because once a JPEG is saved, it loses a bit of its quality. She actually recommended that I take the photo in an RAW, a RAW format, simply because this format is a lossless format, which means you don't lose any quality, regardless of how many times you've saved it or sent it. No, I didn't. And the wonderful thing about self-publishing through Ingram Spark is that they provide the template for you. So you fill out the form and it just comes out with this template and you don't need to worry about anything else. In addition to that, to make my book ready for publishing, I actually hired professionals. One of them was a graphic designer who really eased the process for me because she knew what she was doing. <laughs> ISBN is an international standard book number. So this is like an individual book identifier. Did I get my own ISBN? Yes, I did. The reason for that is because I wanted to be the publisher and I wanted to completely own it. The other great thing about having an ISBN is when you allocate a particular ISBN number to a book, it automatically shows up in internet searches. <laughs> and I'm very excited about this, but if you google my name, you will see my next poetry book which is coming up in October, but it will show up as a book that is in the works. I bought my ISBNs through a company called Thorpe Bowker. I hope I'm not mispronouncing that. I did not buy the pack with the barcodes. The reason why I didn't buy the barcodes is because I knew that Ingram Spark already provided that in their book cover template. No, I didn't. I know illustrations can be really beautiful and add to the work, but I didn't want anything to be taken away from my words. I wanted the focus to be completely on what I had written and not what I had drawn. The way I decided to format my poems was one poem per page because I preferred the appearance of it. And also some of my poems were quite long, so it allowed that extra space um, earlier how I mentioned space is quite appealing to the eye. I didn't want to squish them together. So I think it looks quite appealing. <laughs> if you are not sure which pages or poems will be printed on the left hand side versus the right hand side of the page, turn page numbers on. The default setting is to always be on the right to be shown on the outside instead of the right. Uh, you can see the page number is on the outside. So it's on the left hand side and then on the right hand side. One of the other things to remember when you're formatting your book is to have patience. <laughs> yes, I have so much of that just right in here. First things first, poetry is very creative. It can be quite figurative. You can use alliteration, metaphors. You can use so many forms of literature that it is insane. So I think take your time with it. And not only that, but explore different variations of language. Use your imagination, because that helped me a lot in my second book. <laughs> it creates a different vibe, and 
I guess also a form of mystery. So it really, it really depends what kind of emotion you want to stir in the reader or what kind of themes are in your book. But I highly recommend playing around with language. So along with using more creative language or just having more fun with it, I also think it's important to remember quality over quantity. Reading it and kind of thinking, well, this doesn't make me feel the emotion that I had intended. So what I had done is either cut it out and placed it in a document full of notes or left it, walked away, come back and revisited it with complete different perspective and changed the whole poem. <laughs> if you are unsure how your poetry sounds, I would recommend using a sounding board. So that could be your best friend, your mum, whoever you feel comfortable sharing your work with, I would read it to them. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, record yourself. The importance of this to ensure that your poetry flows. If you get stuck, go for a walk, have a shower. The best kind of ideas have come to me when I'm in my most relaxed state. So don't stress too much about the creative flow that's happening because sometimes that is cut off and it is frustrating but you don't want to force it. Something else that I think is quite useful is to try and organize your poems. I'll use my book as an example again. I organized my poems into different chapters and these chapters represented stages of my healing through this breakup and how it affected me. I think the importance of having that is it not only tells a story from beginning to end, but each of the individual poems also quack, also quack, <laughs> also pack quite a punch. The book title that you decide to go with is also quite important. It should tell you the either content or theme of the book itself. So to me, bones, means stripping down to nothing, going back to vulnerability. Don't stress about what you're not up to yet. If you look too far ahead, it could overwhelm you and that could be quite detrimental to where you're at right now. So just focus on what you're doing now, enjoy what you're doing now and remain in that kind of headspace and bubble. Last but certainly not least, be your own motivator. You are passionate about poetry, you are passionate about self-publishing, so regardless of what happens, don't lose sight of that and keep persevering. Problems are never as big as you think they're actually going to be. So as I mentioned earlier, enjoy it. Take your time with it. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but I hope that... <laughs> I hope that helps you kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.